Like I said earlier, when we first kicked off this zoo series, there was a book called My School's A Zoo, and it has an exclamation point in the title. And usually when you use an exclamation point is when you are um, emphasizing something and really mean it. And I am sure at home right now, sometimes you might feel like your house is the zoo. And so it's a great book for us to look at some of the rhyming words, some of the silly illustrations and the kinds of animals that you might find in a zoo. It's written by Stu Smith and illustrated by David Catro. The title page has a little ant hill down here, which again reminds me of our time and our science lesson about the ant habitat. But if this is indi any indication of how this book is going to go, it is going to be, I believe, a pretty wild ride. Yesterday's trip to the zoo left me feeling rather strange. Like my life was somehow different or just about to change. So, this character is waking up. <laughs> Probably never seen a giraffe come through the window to nibble on the covers. And we're finding out that yesterday this student went to the zoo with the rest of the class and now the feeling is rather strange because maybe since that trip life is about to change so let's find out oh my goodness he's come down for breakfast yikes my parents did not look the same I watched them snort and drool. My sister ate my homework, and so I'm glad it's time for school. School, drool. There's our zebra. Look at what animal this is. The mom and the dad snorting and drooling. And here's the little sister in the high chair with the schoolwork. Uh-oh. As I climbed aboard the school bus, my heart began to race. The driver waved his hairy arms with banana on his face. What kind of animal was the bus driver now? You are correct. Looks like a, a big gorilla or ape or something. Animals crammed in every seat. Where'd all the people go? Where are all the kids? There has to be an answer. I'll bet Miss Wright will know where all the people have gone. Well, who do you think Miss Wright is? Yes, Miss Wright is his teacher. But when he walked into the classroom, dun, dun, dun. Would that be silly if this looked like some of your teachers? I ran into my classroom, but my teacher wasn't there. I would have told the sub if she hadn't been a bear. There were beehives on my desk and lizards at my feet. A goat ate all of my pencils. There were needles on my seat. What kind of needles? Needles from a porcupine. All the bees coming out of the beehive. I bet that's why this bear had the beehive, don't you think? Because the bees were making honey. Bears love honey. By the time I got to art class, there was nothing I could do. There were pythons on the ceiling wrecking havoc with the glue. Well, filled.
<laughs> computer lab was crazy. The mice were eating slugs. The computers didn't work on account of all the bugs. And that is a little pun about the mice, right? Because we use sometimes a mouse to guide our computer when we're using it. And if you didn't know, sometimes if there's a problem with the computer, they say it has a little bug. And so I think that that's something funny that Mr. Stu did on this page. I tried to call for help, but a yak was on the phone. <laughs> the principal was useless. He was just gnawing on a bone. What animal was the principal? Tiger. Stripes like a zebra. The librarian caught me hiding and threw me quite a look. As I glanced around the room, I noticed worms in every book. What animal is the librarian? And sometimes you've heard the phrase called, if you love books, you're called a bookworm. And there they are, getting in all the books. The lunchroom sure was crowded, and the aides looked pretty mean. The lions and the wildebeest were causing quite a scene. <clears throat> the lobster in my lunchbox snapped its claws up in the air. A vulture watched me patiently so he could take his share. Vultures do that. They come get the leftovers. And that reminds me of the title page right there, doesn't it? Do you remember what the lobster had in the claw from our title page? That kind of cookie. Does it look like an Oreo? It reminds me of an Oreo. Let's check. I believe that means this was a clue as to something that was happening in this book. I like it when title pages do that for us. The turtles on the playground were spinning down the slide while hyenas laughed in chorus as a hippo took a ride. I bet that the turtles were going really fast down the slide, don't you? Because their shells were so slippery. Oh dear, music class. It was noisy. A penguin led our band. The ostrich missed his cue and the monkey smashed his hand. Let's look at the instruments. He was patiently waiting to take his turn playing the violin. But now, what kind of animal is down here? Looks like a rabbit playing a, this instrument is called a tuba. The ostrich, who usually puts his head in the sand, has now put it into the tuba, causing problems, I'm sure. And the monkey smashed his hand, we just read. And I'm thinking that this looks a little bit like a symbol, where the monkey does the little symbols. I've seen a real monkey play symbols, not just in my imagination in real life, but it looks like when he was doing his symbols, he smashed his thumb. So he's hurting. I was feeling kind of nauseous, so I went to see the nurse. But judging by her awful fangs, I thought she might make things worse. So it went the other way. There were starfish on my papers, and a beaver cleaned the boards. The seal clapped two erasers while a fox gave out awards. There's the seal we've seen a few times. This little fox. They're trying to make the best of it, aren't they? The bus ride home was dreadful. The skunks made quite a stink. Did the zoo trip cause this mess? I closed my eyes to think, wondering. We went on that field trip yesterday to the zoo. Did this 
happen because of our trip? He closed his eyes to think while the skunks made us stink. But the next thing I knew, the driver tapped my hand and things seemed back to normal. When I got off, look, he looks like his normal self and now he's getting off and his sister's playing in the sand. I sure hope that our next trip to the dinosaur display won't have the same effect as the zoo trip did today, but that can never happen. The dinosaurs are gone. Remember we say they're extinct. So if they're not living anymore, if the dinosaurs are gone, at least I think they are. But then again, I could be wrong. Dun, dun, dun. What do you think is going to happen next? Well, that's your job. Time to write a new book.